Welcome to the channel, folks. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking fast, talking furious, talking the fast and the furious. Fast one, the one that started it all. And I'm gonna tell you why Jesse, yes, that guy, is the most important character in this movie. So buckle up. The Fast and the Furious, the one that started it all. Where to begin? Well, how about a mention of the movie it's a remake of? This movie is basically Point Break with cars instead of surfing. Paul Walker playing Keanu Reeves and Vin Diesel playing Patrick Swayze. If you're watching this video about Fast and Furious and you've seen Point Break, leave a comment down below for some of that sweet, sweet early 90s cred. We're from the future. This movie is amazing in many ways, but I'm going to talk to you about how, apart from all the action scenes, street racing, and ass shots, this movie's meticulous characterization and a perfectly designed arc saw it outperform all possible expectations for a street racer movie and lay the foundation for the larger franchise and why Jesse is the key to it all. Is that fun? To get started, I'll have to do a little recapping. The movie opens with a hijacking of an 18-wheeler. Three black Civics come out and approach a semi-truck. The Civics have green neon lights underneath to make sure that if they get caught, it's very clear it's them. And then, out of this green glow, a guy pulls out the windshield of a big truck with a grappling hook. And about those grappling hooks, no one knew it at the time, but grappling hook technology would become a huge part of the Fast and Furious franchise. Just wait, they ain't afraid of no grappling hooks in this franchise. After the windshield is out, a guy comes up out of the sunroof of another Civic, attaches to the truck with another grappling hook, jumps onto the rig, drugs the driver, drives off with the truck. Add in the Civic swerving and driving underneath the truck and this is an absolutely iconic action scene. But that's about it. We don't get any characterization from it because we don't know who it is yet. The movie just started. After this, we do get strong characterization of what will become one of our two main characters, Dom. Starting with the scene at his store and then at the street race scene. During the scene at the store, Dom's crew is introduced. And I gotta stop here and talk about this yellow car. Wow, that is a 1995 Nissan Skyline GTR R33, the holy grail, unavailable in the US, a JDM car, and an anachronism, why? There is a 25 year wait on importing Japanese cars, with only a few esoteric and expensive ways around it, so this car shouldn't be in the US until 2020. That's now! How Leon got his hands on this car is one of the great mysteries of the Fast and the Furious. Anyway, during this scene, Brian and Vince fight, showing Vince is a hothead but importantly establishing that Dom is undisputed alpha, especially with this line. Don't push it! You embarrass me! I thought that was strong. You embarrass me? That's something my grandmother used to say to me. So yeah, alpha dog for sure. After this, we are taken right into the street race scene, and you know what that means. Three foot dolly shot. Oh yes, the three foot dolly shot that started it all. So go ahead and check that box. The street race scene shows a crowd of cars and people gathered where Dom races three other guys, including Brian, who puts up the pink slip to his car. Dom wins and therefore wins Brian's car. This scene serves to further enhance Dom's characterization as the alpha, and not just of his crew, but of the entire racing scene. Double alpha. And also, along with the driving clip earlier in the movie and the scene at the store, completes our introduction to Brian. Though this is before we know he's undercover. Before Dom can take possession of Brian's car, the cops show up and everyone scatters. Brian helps Dom escape and they bond over an eventful drive that sees the villain Johnny Tran get introduced, shown to be a dangerous man, and then shown destroying Brian, I mean Dom's car. Again, strong characterization. The two eventually make it back to Dom's house together. We get more characterization at this point. It is made clear again that Dom is the alpha. Double alpha and Vince is again characterized as a hothead. Vince questions Dom's bringing Brian back to the house, and Dom yells, The buster brought me back. As Dom retires upstairs with Letty, he pauses to remind Brian that he owes him a 10 second car. You owe me a 10 second car, right? Remember that line for later. Brian brings Dom back, owes Dom a 10 second car. Next thing you know, we're in act two, and it's revealed to the audience that Brian is an undercover cop investigating mysterious truck heists, and the plot picks up some pace. Brian gets in with Dom's crew. Dom and Vince catch Brian breaking into Hector's garage. Vince pleads with Dom to accept that Brian is a cop, but Dom trusts Brian. The three then break into Johnny Tran's garage together. Tran shows up and we get more characterization of him as a bad and dangerous man. The rest of Act 2 is pressure on Brian to make a call about who is behind the thefts, leading him to agree to go after Tran, which turns out to be wrong. All along, Brian is falling in love with Mia. Brian slowly realizes it's Dom behind the thefts. Next up, the race war scene and we get another three foot dolly shot. The crew attempts another truck heist. This one goes Mad Max. And Brian reveals he's a cop while saving Vince and of critical importance. Jesse gets killed. Earlier in the movie, at Race Wars, Jesse races Johnny Tran for the pink slip to his car, loses, runs away, and gets killed. Brian and Dom chase and kill Johnny Tran, and Brian lets Dom go. End of movie. Now for why Jesse drives this movie. Jesse races Johnny Tran for pink slips and loses his car, runs off without paying up, 
running from Johnny Tran, the very dangerous character, who we've seen wield his power over Dom and Brian by threatening them, shooting up their car, and leaving them stranded. Plus what he did to the character Ted in that garage. This guy is now after Jesse, but Dom and the rest of the crew just shrug it off and go on with the truck heist. What the hell? Why do they do that? Then after everything goes Mad Max, and Vince helicopters off to the hospital. Now Dom has to go find Jesse right away? What? It doesn't fit with the family theme that's developed later in the franchise or the characterization of Dom in this movie. You have the cookout scene with everyone. You have Dom's soliloquy about his dad's death. Then Jesse goes on the run and Dom shrugs it off. This must seem like it's working against my point about careful characterization. It isn't. You're just thinking of the wrong character. What the Jesse plotline sets up while backtracking Dom's characterization a bit is the crux of the characterization of Brian and of his art. In a regular action movie at this point, after the truck heist gone wrong, the hero has done his thing. He's rescued someone, revealed something about himself, the helicopter is taking off with an injured victim. The movie ends, ready for an easy sequel as we see Dom drive away. But this movie wanted more than some big budget action movies. <clears throat> and had the guts to go back after that big action scene to do it, and it paid off. After the truck heist gone wrong, we end up back at the house with Dom and Brian facing off. Brian's still being a cop and trying to arrest Dom. Dom's going out to look for Jesse. Jesse shows up, but is killed by Johnny Tran and Lance as they drive by on motorbikes. Why? It's all about Brian. The Jesse subplot and chase is necessary to show the completion of Brian's going native. What, are you going native on me, Brian? Jesse's murder causes Brian to finally sympathize with Dom fully before he barely put up with Dom because he was undercover and because he liked Mia. Even if Jesse's death was unrelated to the hijacking of the trucks, it hit Brian hard. The movie was careful to plant some moments between Brian and Jesse. When they're designing the Supra and Brian shows that he cares about Jesse, has concern for his future, and encourages him to develop and use his design skills. Later, at Race Wars, Brian urgently tries to talk Jesse out of racing Tran for pink slips. Brian is shown bonding with Jesse and caring about him. So Jesse's death matters to Brian and changed him. Before Jesse is killed, Brian is still a cop, just trying to take Dom into custody. After Jesse's death, Brian goes after Johnny Tran, whether it's legal or not. Jesse's death and the resulting chase scene get Dom and Brian working together on the same team and for the same emotional cause for the first time. So this is a major moment for this movie and for the greater franchise. Every fan should go back and witness this moment again. They then share an epic quarter mile race. The chase and the race lead Brian to finally decide to fully make things right by letting Dom go. Brian gives Dom his car and lets him go. Jesse's death is critical to the believability of these decisions. If that had just happened on the side of the highway as they watched the helicopter fly Vince off to the hospital, it would not make sense. Brian had to share more with Dom to convince him to throw it all away and let him go. Jesse's death did that and the plant and payoff of the you owe me a 10 second car was perfect. You owe me a 10 second car, right? It starts at the end of act one with Brian bringing Dom back and owing Dom a 10 second car and ends with Brian giving Dom a 10 second car and letting him go. It's symmetrical, it's beautiful, it's perfect. Speaking of plants and payoffs, back to Point Break. Nice Point Break. You see, Point Break does not have this extra scene, but it doesn't have to. Point Break still works because in Point Break, Johnny Utah, the undercover cop, causes all the problems for Bodhi and his crew. Everything would have been smooth for Bodhi and crew if not for Utah. And this helps justify Utah's decision to let Bodhi go in the end. Utah knows he has blame, but in The Fast and the Furious, Brian didn't cause any of Dom's problems. The truckers were arming themselves not because of the police activity or Brian's infiltration, but because Dom and crew were robbing them. Jesse didn't race Tran and get killed because of Brian, but despite Brian trying to talk him out of it. Brian didn't contribute to Dom's problems. Without Jesse's death as a catalyst, Brian would have realized that he wasn't responsible for any of it and that he owed Dom nothing except a 10 second car. Without Jesse's death, Brian would have acted as a cop as he has for the entire movie, even after falling in love with Mia, as he did after the truck heist, as he did when he tried to arrest Dom back at the house. Therefore, unlike in Point Break, Jesse's death and the final chase is necessary to justify Brian's decision to go native. Its careful inclusion shows the attention paid to Brian's character and his art. Whether the audience realized it or not, this mattered, and Jesse was the key. So that's my two-bit analysis of The Fast and the Furious. What do you think? Is Jesse really that important? I think so. End the video. If you want more Fast and Furious content like this, please hijack that thumbs up button and shoot a grappling hook over to that subscribe button. Till next time, this is Talkin' Fast, Talkin' Furious.